Hi, in this video I'll show you how to fix the shadow leakage issue in EV Next using Blender 4.2 and achieving realistic shadows, so make sure to stick around until the end. If you are interested in learning the latest 3D techniques, particularly in Blender, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Before we begin, let me introduce our Asset Distro website, where you can explore a variety of free and premium assets. We offer high-quality game-ready assets and also Blender projects, all of which you are free to use in any of your projects. So be sure to check out our store at store.blackcave.com. I've set up this scene, and I'm currently using EVNext. I've placed an area light behind the creature and I'm also using an HDRI for the lighting. Let's go ahead and open the shader editor window. Next go to the world section. I'm using an HDRI here that I downloaded from HDRI Haven. Now let's identify the main issue. Press Z to switch to render mode. The features I'll be discussing are available in EVNX starting from Blender 4.2 and later. I explained how to configure ray tracing and other settings in the tutorial here. As you can see, there are some shadow leakage issues. Although the light is coming from the back, its effect is also visible at the front. This issue is caused by both the area light and the HDRI. Let's go ahead and select the light. I want to increase the intensity of the light to make the shadow leakage more visible. In the light settings, adjust the power to increase the intensity. Alright, we can increase it even further. The light's effect is now very clear. The latest version of Blender no longer includes a feature called Contact Shadow. Ambient Oculogen is also not available. However, some new attributes have been added that are most useful. For instance, ray tracing, which I explained in detail in the tutorial here. However, to address the shadow leakage issue, there is a helpful option. Go to the sampling. You'll find an option called Jittered Shadows. Let's activate it. I also need to enable this option for the light. However, let's first disable the HDRA so we can better see the area light. Now it's clear, but I believe a value of 0 is infected. We'll address the HDRA shadow leakage issue later as well. Let's raise the value slightly. Great, now, now get to the light settings and enable the shadow option. In the shadow section I notice a property labeled Jitter. As you can see the shadow leakage issue is nearly resolved, but we still need to make some adjustments. You can notice the differences. Now let's explore the options available for Jitter. The first option is called Or Blur. Reducing this value will increase the shadow intensity. As you can see, the shadow have improved significantly. Although higher values can cause some shadow issues, they tend to render more smoothly. I notice a shadow issue when I move the camera, but it's only temporary. The problem resolves itself when I stop moving the camera. The second option is called Filter. Increasing this value adds a blur effect to certain areas. Let's raise the value and observe the outcome. In these areas, the light effect appears blurred, and you may notice this in other areas as well. There are some noticeable differences when I set it to zero. In this case, the light effect becomes sharper. The final property is resolution limit. Higher values reduce the memory allocated for shadows. Adjusting this value whether up or down doesn't significantly impact the scene. You should test it in larger scenes to see the effect. If your hardware can handle it, go with a lower value. 
Alright, we're finished with area light. Now let's test other light types and compare the differences. First, let's delete this light. Now press Shift A and from the light options, choose sunlight. Sunlight has a few differences compared to area lights. Let's take a look. First, let's make some adjustments. Alright, as you can see, there's no shadow leakage at all. This type of light doesn't seem to have any shadow issues anyway. Let's go ahead and activate Jitter. After activating Jitter and adjusting the settings, I don't notice any major differences compared to the area light. I haven't encountered this issue with any other types of lights. It seems to be a problem exclusive to the area light. For instance, the point light functions effectively without jitter. Give it a try yourself. Alright, let's address the final problem. The shadow leakage issue with the HDRI. I need to choose one. As you can see, the shadows in the scene aren't correct. Let's rotate the HDRI. I covered lighting and HDRI in detail in the tutorial here. The shadowed areas are quite poor. Alright, to adjust the global light, I need to access the global settings. Here I need to access the settings. Now in the sun section, let's enable the shadows. Great, next I need to enable jitter. After enabling Jitter, I don't notice any significant changes compared to the area light. Only a few details have changed. Alright, the result looks great. Now let's rotate the light and check for any shadow issues. Okay, good. Ray tracing plays a significant role in achieving these results, and Jitter alone won't resolve in shadow issues. Make sure to check out the ray tracing tutorial too, so you can achieve the best results. As you can see, there are significant differences between using ray tracing and not using it. Additionally, remember to adjust the raise value in the shadows section to enhance the quality of the shadows. If you know other tips, I'd be happy to hear them in the comments. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And feel free to share your questions and ideas in the comments.